So now we'll turn to the cross-section sheet layout. Now, as I mentioned um, earlier, there's a few things we want to show, but I want to, first of all, uh, make sure I point this out. Um, in order for you to place name boundaries for cross-section sheets, you must have the 3D model open. Remember, cross-sections are being cut directly from the 3D model. The boundaries are going to be placed in the 3D model. Okay, so you have to have the 3D model open. If you don't, uh, you will receive a, a warning message. So again, that's just a best practice. Remember, placing name boundaries for cross sections, you have to have the 3D model open. So let's start with the basics in case some of you may not be familiar with it. And then we'll move on to a few other things. So here's my little project that I'm working on. And you'll notice I've created a file called Route 97 Cross-Section Sheets. It is a blank file, um, just as we did previously. I've already got the information, my geometry corridor terrain referenced in. And you'll notice I've got a 2D view and a 3D view um, uh, available. So as I said, I've got to have that 3D view open. So I'm going to go to Drawing Production, uh, Place Name Boundary, just like we did earlier. And we've already done Plan and Profile. This case, I want to select Civil Cross-Section. Okay. So we have a seed files. In this case, I only have one uh, drawing seed. I'm going to select that. I'm going to select the scale um, that I want them to be at. I'm going to select the alignment so it can calculate my stations correctly. I want to give it a group name. Um, I'm uh, sorry, just like we did earlier, Route 97 cross sections. I'm going to start at 12 plus 00, zero and then what it'll do is basically, in this case, instead of uh, uh, name boundaries, it'll give me these pattern line representations. Uh, you can change the interval on the fly. I, I, right now, I had it at 20. I can change it to 100. I can change the vertical exaggeration, whatever I, I want to do. Um, I can include control points, so any control points, VPTs, VPCs, PCs, things like that that are found within that range will be added. And I can tell it I want to create the drawing and show that secondary dialog. Okay, So I'm going to say uh, OK, and those will be placed, and I will get the secondary dialog. Now, as before, there's the annotation group that's going to be used. It's showing that to us. I can add these to the sheet index. I can hit OK right here and process these if I want to. Um, but once again, um, I'm going to choose Cancel because I want to show you a few things first. So you can see the name boundaries are placed over here in, in 3D. Um, they are uh, splices or slices, if, if you want to use that term, going through the, uh, the 3D um, model. Okay. And so you can see every 20 feet, you can see one that's a little odd there. That's a control point that has been placed in there as well. So let's go open the name boundary uh, manager. And you can see the cross-section groups are recognized. Now, one thing that's different, the names are taken. You know, Notice we didn't give it an individual name for the sheets, uh, for the name boundaries, because they're named based on the station. So you can see them, you know, 0, 20, 40. You'll see the, that one in there. If I want to delete one, uh, by the way, you can just right-click and delete it. It'll not, not only go out of the way out of the dialog, you'll notice it'll disappear um, from the graphics as, as well. Um, so at any point, um, we can show that secondary dialog when we're cutting cross-sections, just like we did uh, with the others. I can right click and say create the cross section drawing. If you notice in the bottom right hand corner, those are now being processed, the sheets, um, and they are they are processed and they are going to be annotated. And it'll automatically open up to the to the last sheet in the um, list here. So as before, each individual slice or each individual name boundary is put into its own drawing model. Um, as before, that all the annotation is done in the model. Um, the graphics come directly from the 3D model, um, but the annotation, uh, as, as you, I've just shown you, can be removed and replaced at any um, point. So each individual cross-section is placed in its own drawing model, and then the individual cross-sections themselves are, are referenced in. Uh, just like in plans production and the plan drawing, 
uh, there's 12 plus 0, 60, 12 plus 0, 80, and 12 plus 100 are all referenced in. They can be moved up and down, situated differently, just by moving the reference file. So that's kind of the basics of how the process works. Now, keep in mind that once your cross sections are cut, you can continually add data by just referencing into the 3D model. So for example, um, if I went back in and referenced in my drainage or my utilities to the 3D model, they would just automatically show up on the cross section. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to recut them or anything like that. So as you add data to the 3D model, it'll just show up on the, on the cross section. Now I did want to show you how to add single cross sections. So let's come back in uh, to my list here. Or, or to my little project here, and you can see I, my cross sections are in there every every 20 feet or every 20 meters in this case, as, as this is a metric job. So what if I wanted to add just individual sections? How would I do that? Well, I'm going to go back to my place name boundary tool, and one of the tools you've got there just to the right is civil cross section two points. So I'm going to select that. Uh, again, you'll need a seed file, which I'm going to select here. Uh, the group here, notice I could create a new group or I can append to the existing group, which obviously is what I want to do in this case. So it recognizes I've already got a group of name boundaries, so I'm going to append to that. Uh, this is a pretty simple uh, tool here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to identify the alignment so it knows uh, you know which alignment I'm creating this for and there's a couple things you can do for example you can just place uh, immediately place two points which will create uh, there a new um, a, a new name boundary for me so if you want to just do it freehand you can do that now if you want to be more uh, more accurate more specific we can use uh, civil AccuDraw so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna ball up civil AccuDraw now, don't forget with civil AccuDraw I've got to use the O button to identify the alignment okay that's so that the stations are calculated correctly so here I've gone to a particular station I may have a culvert location or something there so I'm gonna key in that station uh, so we'll just key in 12 plus uh, 10 um, I'm gonna key in a particular offset we'll just do minus 40 um, and I want to go to the other side and basically we'll just hit an enter key to, to put in 12 plus 10 there offset of 40 we will hit a data point and you can see that it is placed in there as well. So you can freehand these or you can do civil AccuDraw. Now at this point I've added them into the group. Um, so if I go back to that group and take a look you'll see there's the uh, one at 12 plus 010 uh, that we added in with civil AccuDraw and there's the one at 12 plus 028 that we just freehanded, right? So they were added to that same group. So I'm just gonna create my cross-section drawing here and uh, and and it will go and process just like it did before. Now I showed you. Um, uh, you, you noticed when we uh, cut the cross sections originally under the basic section, uh, you saw that in the drawing model the cross sections were annotated. Okay, so let's go look at a little bit more about that. So I'm back in my uh, my little project here. Um, I've got, you know, I've laid out my cross sections every every 20 feet and I've already cut my sheets here. So let's go and look at um, one of those sheets. So so we'll just pick one of my sheets here and you can see the cross sections are all annotated. Everything looks great. Now on the right side um, I have a slope of 1 to 6, okay? And so that's been annotated. So I want to make a change to my model and so to do that uh, I'm gonna um, again I could activate the reference file or in this case I'm just gonna go back over to my corridor file so I'm gonna get out of there go back over to my corridor I'm gonna edit um, the template drop and so here's the template drop I'm just using a single template drop here I'm gonna edit that template drop on that point right there so we'll just double click on it and let's change that from a 1 to 6 to a 1 to 4. So we'll just apply and close and say OK. And the model is going to reprocess itself. You can see that in the lower right hand corner. It automatically reprocesses and update itself. Once that's done, I'm going to move back over to the cross section file. And let's go into that drawing model for one of the cross sections. Okay. Now, 
one of the things you're going to see here is that the graphics have automatically updated. Now, that's the reason for that is because they are referenced. If I hover, you'll notice that's a reference from the corridor. Those graphics are just basically, if you change the model, the cross sections are going to update on the fly. So the every all the graphics in there for the proposed and for the existing terrain come directly from the um, from the the model, but the annotation has to be done auto uh, manually. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say remove the model annotation, and it says, do you want to do all the models? And I'm going to say yes because I want to do this not just for one, but for all the cross sections. So. Again, this doesn't happen automatically, but it's very easy to do. So you'll notice I just went to 12 plus 100. All the annotation has been removed. Now I'm going to say annotate the model. And when it asks me, did you want to do all models, I'm going to say yes. So this is not going to do just one cross section. It's going to do all of them. So it's going to basically re-annotate every single one of them. So um, I'm going to re-annotate my sections there. Um, you can see there now the annotation is redone and it shows as one to uh, one to four. Okay, so everything everything looks good, not in just that one, but all. And of course, go pick a sheet. All of those are just referenced directly to our sheet models, so that carries through into our sheet model as we would uh, obviously um, expect. Now let's talk really quickly here at the end about federated uh, workflows. Now so far we've looked at a workflow where our cross-section name boundaries and our sheets are in the same file and we referenced in the required information, geometry, terrains, corridors, um, etc. Now that would be a best practice. We do not suggest that you put your sheets in with your corridor. There's just no reason to do that. Create a blank file. Um, reference in all of your, your corridor and all of your relevant information and then put your sheets and your name boundaries in their own file. However, for cross sections that is the required workflow. You, you cannot separate your name boundaries and your cross section sheets the way we did. Um, if you'll remember in the plans part of it we put our MOT boundaries and our plan and profile boundaries in one file we put our sheets in a separate file. You cannot do that with cross sections. In cross sections, the name boundaries and the sheets are required to be in the same file. But of course, they can be in a file separate from your other information. With that, that concludes our presentation for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and it's been very informational. Um, so I want to say thank you for listening and have a great day. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.